A hot summer's night in Townsville, North Queensland. A lone hitchhiker waits for a ride on the side of the road. His name is Tony Jones, and his next trip will ultimately carry him to a violent death. This has been a story of cowardice on the part of whoever killed Tony and of bravery of those coming forward. These are the brave women lifting the lid on an alleged confession, revealing the gruesome cover-up of a young man's lonely death in an outback slaughterhouse. He told me he'd killed somebody. That was why he was upset. What did he tell you he'd done? That he had helped dispose of a body. He said, I know how to do things properly. And these are the two childhood mates at the heart of Australia's creepiest cold case. Tony Jones was 20, carefree, on a hitchhiking adventure, exploring as much of North Queensland as he could. On the evening of the 3rd of November 1982, Tony called home to Perth from a phone box in Townsville. Hello, Tony here. It was the last time older brother Mark would ever speak with him. Do you remember that conversation? Yes, I do. What did he say to you? He talked about coming down from Cairns. Uh, he talked about having to sleep on the, the beaches, that lifts were tough to get along that part of the highway compared to his earlier travels. Um, he warned me that he'd be back soon and to make sure his bed was ready when he returned. Thanks, Mark. Catch you later, mate. Tony hitched a ride out of Townsville that night. He'd made plans to meet another brother, Tim, in Mount Isa, almost 900 kilometres west. He told his family he'd be there within a day or two. Tony never showed up. His bank transaction showed that he'd been drawing seven or eight dollars a day over the final few days. He had a bank balance of two dollars ninety-nine. And then on the third of November, nineteen eighty-two, it just stopped. He made a phone call and used his. He mentioned that he was using his last calls. Everything stopped from that point. You think he was dead within hours of that phone call? I believe he died that night. After more than three decades of searching for any trace of Tony Jones, new evidence that may solve one of Australia's longest running missing person mysteries leads here to Hewenden. It's a small cattle town in northwest Queensland that seems to have been harbouring a dark secret. At the centre of that alleged secret are Kevin Wright and John Eastoff. Lifelong friends who grew up together in Hewenden, halfway between Townsville and Mount Isa. Tell me about Kevin's relationship with John Eastoff. Um, Johnny was a friend of his from Hewenden that he grew up with, who he always referred to as being one of his best mates. Natalie Parker is bravely speaking out against a man she's feared half her life, ex-partner Kevin Wright. You almost felt that Eastoff had a hold over Kevin. I'd noticed that Kevin, to me, his behaviour was different when Johnny was around. So I did ask him one night, what is the hold that Johnny has on him? And um, he did say that Johnny and I have done things together that nobody will ever know about. The couple met in 1992 and have two sons together, Kale and Sam. It was a volatile relationship from beginning to end. 
How early in the relationship with Kevin did things get bad? It was within a week of shifting in together before he first hit me. He told me that night, if I ever leave him or take his son away, he will track me down and fucking kill me. And he made it clear. Did you believe him? Yes. <laughs> That's so why I stayed. You stayed for 18 years? Yes. <laughs> Jennifer Crisp has also suffered, but at the hands of Kevin's best mate, John Eastoff. Did Johnny ever threaten to kill you? Yes. He would say to me, um, I'm going to put you in the ground. Um, and I'd say, well, that's stupid. You know, you do me in. The kids would have no mother, you'd go to jail, they'd have no father. He said, I'm too smart for that. They've got to prove it was me. They're never going to prove it was me. So he'd boast to you that he could get away with killing you if he wanted to? Yeah, quite often. For 23 years, Jennifer's protected her former husband with her silence. Not anymore. He's um, ripped shower curtains down from the railing and choked me with, strangled me with a uh, shower curtain, um, held me up against the wall, choking me, throwing me to the ground like a little rag doll. And are you remonstrating with him while he's doing this? Oh, yeah, yeah. What would he say? Yeah, there's no getting through to them once they're in that... Once they're in that rage, I don't know, you just, their eyes turn, they're just a different person. As teenagers in Hewenden in the early 80s, Kevin Wright and John Eastoff were joined at the hip. Hey, mate, how are you? Hey, you're not bad, are you? Known as much for their drinking as they were for their fighting. Did John ever talk to you about the fact that he'd been in fights with other yeah, people? Yeah. What did he say? I remember, um, I think he was a shearer. So um, I remember John skiting about putting him in hospital, breaking his jaw and um, having to suck out of a straw. At 17, Kevin Wright, an apprentice butcher, worked at the local slaughter yard his father owned. John Eastoff was a boarder at Townsville Grammar School with his family based in Hewenden. Whether Tony Jones crossed paths with these two mates in Hewenden is currently the subject of a coronial inquest. Police have named two persons of interest in this case, uh, and they have been the subject of intensive investigations. Tony Jones was the youngest of seven children. The family was large but tight-knit, and from the moment their kid brother vanished, they fought for answers. Has there been a day in the last 34 years when you haven't thought about your brother? No, uh, there probably hasn't. I haven't always been obsessed with finding out the answers, but where there are leads, they have to be bloody well followed up. It's as simple as that. If only it was. At the time, police refused to take Tony's disappearance seriously. In the years that followed, leads were neglected and evidence lost. The issue was the silence, the deafening silence, the phone that just never rang. We needed news. We were told to go home, that they would handle it, but we heard nothing and it was unbearable. And does he reference East off in there at all? For three decades, Mark and his brothers conducted their own investigations. Determined Tony's case would not go cold they even became the force behind National Missing Persons Week. 
Now, finally, the breakthrough they've been waiting for. An alleged confession which leads here to the Huendon slaughter yards. So Kevin Wright told mm. you mm. he cut up the body mm. of an unknown person mm. and that person had been killed by John Eastoff. Yeah, he said that um, Johnny had killed this bloke and Kevin um, helped him by going to pick up the body and he took it to the slaughter yards and put it through a bandsaw. Kevin said that he had a special bond with Johnny because they'd killed somebody. Jerry Stanfield is the recent ex-partner of Kevin Wright, a person of interest in the inquest into the disappearance of hitchhiker Tony Jones. The 20-year-old vanished in 1982. Did Kevin ever make any admissions to you at any time about who the person was that they'd allegedly killed? No, there was no names. He just said oh, it was some backpacker that um, nobody would miss. So he used the word backpacker? Yeah. Six weeks ago, Jerry told the inquest into Tony's disappearance that in 2011, Kevin Wright made a number of shocking admissions to her. He's making these admissions while he's very drunk. Yeah, just falling lifeless on the floor and crying, just crying and sobbing. Did Kevin tell you anything about how the person was allegedly killed? Yeah. He said that um, Johnny hit him, um, punched him, and had broke his neck. Um, and Johnny had turned up in the middle of the night, you know, yelling and, and frantically trying to get Kevin to come, come and help him. And Kevin um, helped him by going to pick up the body and he took it to the slaughter yards and put it through a bandsaw. Did he say when this happened? He told me it was when he was 17. So when Kevin Wright was 17, mm. what year would that have been? 1982. If the story of Kevin Wright's anguished confession is to be believed, then this is the place where 34 years ago, he and his friend John Eastoff set out to conceal a murder. What better place to dispose of a corpse than an outback slaughterhouse? In 1982, Kevin Wright was living in Huendon and working for his father as an apprentice butcher and slaughterman. It's a role that included killing and cutting up beasts. Skulls and bones were burned in large pits and leftover fat boiled up in copper pots. So, Jerry, that's the old family butchery, is it? Yeah, yeah, we come past here. And... Wright took Jerry on a tour of his hometown, Huendon, in 2011. His first home, his father's butchery, and the slaughter yard. So, where did you pull up? Just about here. And he said, Oh, that's, that's my slaughterhouse. And when you got the opportunity, you confronted him about what he'd admitted to you when he was yeah. drunk. Yeah, I said, you know, you did tell me um, that you killed somebody here. And he just went, what? What are you talking about? And I just said, well, you told me that you cut somebody up here. He goes, you're fucking kidding. He sort of laughed and he just went, well, oh, yeah, nah. Is it fair to say that you believe he was kind of tormented by the guilt of oh, what he did? Oh, tormented, rocking like in a fetal position and saying, I'm so fucked up, you know, I've, I've killed somebody. And, yeah, it was like, you know, it was always tormented, definitely. Jerry first told police about Kevin Wright's alleged confession in July 2012, 
after an explosive argument with him. But she later retracted her statement after Wright found out and allegedly forced her to tell police she made it up. He said, I'll kill you girls and yourself. If you don't retract? If I don't go in there and sort it out. So you went to the police? Yeah. What and did you do? Yeah, well, he, he parked outside the uh, Townsville Police Station. He drove into the Townsville Police Station and and I went in and, and saw, you know, um, asked to see somebody about um, a statement I'd made about Kevin Wright. So you told the police then that you'd made up these allegations mm. about Kevin Wright making admissions about murder. Mm. What was the truth? He, he had told me that he was involved with, some, with a murdering somebody. So why or did cutting you, up somebody and... Why did you lie to the police? I was just scared for myself and my, my girls. People will suggest that you're lying now. Mm. What do you say to that? No, I'm not, no. But Jerry's evidence would have amounted to nothing if it wasn't for another of Kevin Wright's ex-partners, Natalie Parker. She came forward a few months later. I do believe he regrets probably now confessing this to people. And I don't think he really thought any of us would have the guts to come forward. Drunk and hysterical, Kevin allegedly confessed to Natalie three times during their 18-year relationship. But in her version, it was a truck driver he and mate John Eastoff killed. What exactly did he tell you that night? He told me he'd killed somebody. That was why he was upset. He um, went on to tell me it was something that he did with Johnny Eastoff. What did they do then? Uh, Kevin's parents owned the slaughter yards out in Huondon, which had a burning pit where you would get rid of the carcasses. Um, so I believe they put the body into the burning pits and set it on fire. Natalie finally left Kevin Wright in 2010 but waited two years to make a statement to police. Did Kevin ever threaten you about the fact that you now knew about this confession? Yes, he constantly reminded me of the fact that I know what he's, he's capable of. You're obviously really quite bitter towards Kevin, aren't you? Um, he's been violent to you, he's I'm, verbally abused you. I hate what he's done to our children. Are you saying what you're saying to us and to the police and to the inquest because you just want to get square with Kevin Wright? No, I would never bring my children or myself into this. And why would I want to when I have to fear the repercussions of what Johnny or Kevin or anyone else they associate with could do? It also took guts for another key witness, Melissa Bell, to come forward to police. As a friend to both Natalie Parker and Kevin Wright, she told the inquest Kevin broke down in tears one night in the back of a cab and made a chilling confession. Had you told Melissa at this stage that Kevin had confessed to you? That I'd murdered told somebody? nobody. Um, I had never spoken to anyone about Ke what Kevin said to me at that point. So Melissa comes to you, what does she tell you? She said, Nat, um, Kevin told me something in the taxi last night. Um, um, she then went on to explain to me that Kevin had told her that he had killed somebody with a good mate of his, Johnny, um, that it was a hitchhiker. Did you believe that the two of them had killed somebody? Yes. I certainly, after he'd told Mel as well, why would you tell another person? Three alleged confessions to three separate women two ex-partners and a friend. But Kevin Wright is consistently inconsistent, naming the victim firstly as a truck driver, then a hitchhiker and a backpacker. He never once names Tony Jones. How do you explain those inconsistencies? Well, that's something for Kevin Wright to be asked. I believe that he desperately needed to unload 
Um, these confessions were made uh, curled up in the fetal position in tears, talking about being tormented uh, by this knowledge, um, needing to tell somebody about it. And I believe the first confession, which is uh, a different scenario to the others, was this first attempt to unload, but without giving revealing evidence. Why would he have said a truck driver rather than a hitchhiker? Tony was the only hitchhiker to have gone missing in, in North Queensland for a long time before and a long time after that. A hitchhiker, killing a hitchhiker in Huendon would have been a very incriminating thing to say. Uh, but there's some consistencies that are pretty damning. This is Kevin right now. A 51-year-old businessman who runs KJ Wright Concreting in Townsville. We approached him for an interview to respond to the allegations before the inquest that he's confessed to being involved in a murder. Excuse me, Kevin. But Wright was in no mood to shed light on the claims. Kevin, have you got a moment? John Eastoff, also living in Townsville, refused us an interview while the inquest is ongoing. But he's promised to sit down with us when it ends early next year. Eastoff has denied the allegations against him, saying it's crazy talk. He asked us to make it clear that Kevin Wright is now an ex-friend. This has been a story of cowardice on the part of whoever killed Tony and of bravery of those coming forward now. We need to see more bravery. We're not saying that either Kevin Wright or John Eastoff are guilty of any crime involving the death of Tony Jones. Only our courts can make a finding like that. The inquest into Tony Jones' disappearance will resume early next year, and the coroner has ordered both men to appear. However, Kevin Wright and John Eastoff are taking Supreme Court action to avoid giving evidence. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.